Hi there, it's Marie here. Uh, today I'd like to show you how I um, make these, this like a leather look kind of big cover, a cover for a journal. And I'm making it from this paper bag. This is just a flimsy, like a grocery bag. I think I have tomatoes or something like that in it. Um, and I'm going to treat it and make it into this kind of much tougher and um, I'll say like a leather look um, piece that I'm going to use as a journal cover. So it's quite simple. Start off with the bag, any size bag that you want really. Um, and what I did was I trimmed off this kind of excess at the top here. And then what I did was glued everything together. I glued all this in here. I glued that down. Then I glued these like, gusset pieces together. And then I made sure that all these loose bits were glued on. And then before I started the process, I made sure all the glue was dry. So I'm going to get it all glued together, get it dried, and then I'll be coming back to show you the process. So I'll just tell you a little bit now, I'm going to use this um, Liquid Shine Shoe Polish. And this is a brown, um, I mean, you can use any colour you want, I just happen to have the brown. Um, so it, all, it's all you need is your paper bag, your liquid polish, and then some PVA glue to seal it. And I just use this, it's like a builder's PVA bond and I mix it with water, just dilute it with water, about half the amount of water to the amount of glue or something like that, just to thin it down a bit and just put it in a, in a coffee jar, shake it together and use it just to uh, seal it later. And also if you've got anything like this, I've got this, um, sort of the label in here, all I did with this one was just cover it with a piece of um, I just covered it with a piece of paper, uh, book paper, sorry. So that's it. So I'm going to get all this prepared and then we'll come on to the next bit, which is putting on the polish. Okay, so the glue is dried. I've got everything nicely glued and it's all dry. Um, now this bag's been used, so it's quite creased. And I'm going to crease it a little bit more just to give more of the sort of leather effect look. I mean, if you have a bag that hasn't been used and it's not creased, you can just go ahead and, um, you know, use it uncreased so you can crease up a, an unused bag. But uh, I'm going to crease it because it's already quite creased anyway. So it's just some crease in there. And then I'm going to put a layer of uh, the first coat of the liquid shine in the brown. Just put my gloves on because it's a bit uh, messy. I always get messy anyway. Um, now I've seen other methods of this and I've used another method in the past where you used gl uh, glycerin, I think. Glycerine, glycerin and water uh, which gives you like a leather look on paper but uh, I found that this this method works best I, I think anyway in my experience so so anyway now yesterday when I got this out when I tried it it was very dry because I hadn't used it for ages so I had the right idea of putting a pin and then I had a little poke around but then it, it's made it really pour out so it comes out really fierce but um, yeah, so here we go. Just coat one side all over. I don't see if it come out as fast today as it did yesterday. Maybe it's dried up a little bit since I used it. 
because the sponge just tend to to dry out. I try not to drag the paper too much because it's getting wet and it is still quite um can get quite fragile at this stage when it gets wet. You might see some little bits of like bobbling when the paper's wet. But that's okay, you just got to say be <coughs> be fairly gentle with it. Just uh, I find this is quite a good way to apply it, just um Sort of in lines up and down and across. You could do it in, in circles but um, sometimes that leaves you with a little <clears throat> little bit of like a circle kind of design. So there we are, that's one coat. That's nicely covered. Just try these papers off here. Trying already, then it's um, a bit less on there. I'll just put a bit more on, on an even colour. Okay, so let's try all this, and then I've got a bit of an excess pooling, so I'm just gonna dab it up like that, and then to speed up the process, I'm going to use my um gun, um, heat gun, to just dry it a bit, so sorry about the noise. Okay, so I've dried off the first coat. Um, and when you do it when it, it's wet, you get sometimes got like little bubbles forming on the paper. So don't be tempted to try and get them off when it's wet. When it's dry, you should just be able to brush them away. Now the one I did previously, that inside was one coat and the outside was two coats. I've also used some black ink as well, but I'll talk about that later on. Um, this is coming out a little bit lighter today because I think yesterday my polish was coming out a lot, a lot more, so there was a lot more on. But it's a case of building it up, so I think I'm going to leave. I think I'll try two coats back and front again. Um, and then we'll move on to the next stage. So and each time you put some on, this is still slightly damp. You've just got to be careful, it's a bit damp, you don't rip it. But the more you, layers you put on, obviously the stronger it'll become. And then when you've got the uh, PVA on, it'll be even stronger. So now this is coming out a lot, uh, a lot more now. So hopefully these two coats will be fine this time. So again, it's just a case of gently but firmly coating it all over. This will be a lot darker now. So I'm gonna see I'm really messy. I had to take one glove off because I couldn't work with the two gloves on, and then I'm getting it all over my hands. But so I'll uh, I'll dry this off, I'll flip it over, I'll do the other side, and I'll come back with two coats on each, and then we can do the the PVA um sealing. So we'll be back soon. Okay, I'm back with the dried item. Uh, two coats on each side now, nice and dry. And the texture's become quite different, but until you put the PVA on, you don't get this kind of leathery feel. It's still a little bit crinkly. So the PVA, the thing is with this, it's a lot of um, stopping and drying, and it's got to be dry. At this point, it's got to be completely dry before you put the PVA on. So it's a lot of stop-start with this. So 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to coat it with the PVA, which is fairly liquid. It's not thick. And then I don't just brush it on. I kind of dab it like that so you don't get all the brush, all the brush lines. And you can kind of brush it on and then go over and dab it like that. Now I used my heat gun before and um, you know if you haven't got a heat gun or anything like that then that's but a hairdryer would do to a certain point but it's not as hot but just naturally dry and then you know maybe finish it off on the top of a radiator or something if you're still using your heating just to um as I say make sure it's completely dry before you do this and then again this you know needs a good drying i only put one coat of pva on but you could Put a couple of coats on if you wanted. So I'm going to have to do this both sides. I'm going to have to do this side, dry it, then obviously do the other side. So it's just going to be going to be a case of me putting this on here and then going away again and drying it and on both sides. And I'll come back and um, show you what I did with mine. You know it's an option you don't have to you can leave it at the point we'll get to after this or you can i added some inks if you've got ink i mean i don't know why i didn't do the ink underneath the pva and then seal it but i didn't really think about it and i liked the way it looked anyway so i just i left it like that to do it on top i don't know if it worked work if you did it underneath because i didn't do it that way so so it'd be coated, nice coating of PVA, not too thick, but you know, plenty. And then I say I'll dry this, flip it over, do the other side, and then I'll come back and um, talk about the how I finished my mine off. So don't don't have any really thick bits. Thing is, when it's crinkled, it can kind of pool in the creases and it'll just tend to dry it a bit bubbly if you have it um, pooling in the crease especially if you're using heat so just to be aware of that okay so short and sweet I will move on to the next bit soon okay so I'm back again um, PVA is all dry, both sides, coated with PVA. Um, I did it with my heat gun and then I left it for a while. Uh, I've gone and done some ironing actually while I was uh, waiting to make sure it's properly dry so it's not tacky or anything. But what I would advise when you've actually finished is not to leave it closed over for you know maybe about 12 hours, leave it sort of standing up or like that because can still be a little bit tacky without you realising. Um, now, so that's today's piece, and this is the one I did the other day, and it's slightly less shiny. You see the difference between the outside and the inside of that's quite shiny, and the outside's dull. So I think that's because I use the ink on it. So I'm going to do the same with this one. So I just use a permanent ink, like um, I've got a couple here, a Memento and an archival ink. Um, that's a brown one and that's a black one. I think initially I put some of this brown on. Then I uh, went on and did the black. So I just did it, you know, like you would if you were sort of um, distressing something. Went round the edges. I have got light and dark shades anyway because it picks up in the... And the folds and the creases, they come out with different colours. So I'll just do that. Back and front. It's amazing how the texture changes from that crinkly paper to something quite different really. 
This is quite old school actually, when I first started making journals about oh God, it must be three or four years ago. Everyone was making like envelope journals and there were various methods to make them look like this, really. That's when I first used to do that sort of thing. I say I haven't really done anything like in that style for a while, so and then I mean this is a personal preference, I'm just showing you the sort of effect you can get. So then put some some black on. Gosh. I say this is just sort of as I was changing the colour. I think it does kind of dull it down a bit. I think so. I'm sort of doing the black. More or less all over. I mean, if you don't like the shiny look, with, I suppose you could use something like a, a Mod Podge to seal it with, which is um, you know, what you can get in the mat. I think putting this ink on just dull it down a bit. And I say it's got to be a you know a permanent ink, it's no good like a distress ink or something, because that'll just unless you did that under your PVA, but even then you put the PVA on top of a distress glue then um, distress ink and it'll just move about so that's off using a permanent ink. If you can. So that's it. So they're my two. I mean I don't think any two pieces that you do would ever look the same, they're quite different. This one has remained a bit shinier. I've done this one slightly darker on the inside. So there you go, two um, faux leather essentially journal covers. And as I say, um, I'll leave that to dry just sort of standing up to make sure it doesn't stick together if it is still tacky at all. And that's it. Um, I might come back soon and make um, show you how you can make journal covers out of uh, you know packaging. You know, everyone seems to be getting online deliveries uh, just lately. It's I certainly see a lot of vans coming delivering in the street and everything. I think a lot of people are ordering online, so we have a lot of packaging. So I've got like three three types of packaging they can use for. Um, to make journal covers so that'll be the next thing I do when I get a chance I'll come back and show you something like that so thanks for watching I hope you'll give that a try and you like it and I'll see you all again soon bye